Hi there Steph, thanks for popping by. So today's video is all about loan fun and love you a lot this time so. um, I made this card for my husband. Uh, I got that set because I thought it was quite cute. He really likes my husband, sorry. Uh, really likes coffee and hot beverages and stuff like that. So I thought that stamp set was brilliant. Um, so I started by stamping the greeting because that was kind of the important thing for me on that card. Uh, generally I do you know, stamping images, and then later on I try to think of a greeting, but there I already had something in mind, so I stamped a greeting in the middle, and then the images around, and I cut my little uh, mask out of post-it, all of the post-it sticking out, uh, and for this morning images, it's the best I've found so far. Um, and then I use a roll of double-sided tape, and I traced um, little circles with the inside roll, uh, with a pencil, and then I started coloring. And I've seen um, a few cards with this technique and I thought, oh, that looks really, really nice, but I've never tried it. And I wasn't sure how well it would blend. I mean, I know Prismacolor blend really well, but here we're going like, it's three different colors. It's very light, very dark and medium and, you know, white, blue and darker blue. So I wasn't quite sure how well it was going to go. Uh, and I think overall it actually went pretty well. So I'm quite happy. I think there's still room for improvement, but I'm still quite happy with the final result. Um, so I did speed it up a bit because it, you know, it's quite redundant uh, and I've skipped a few steps as well because it's the same colouring every time so uh, if you look at the first two circles you kind of get an idea of how all of them were made really. Um, and then I thought it'd be nice to add a little bit more colour. I picked these colours because he likes aqua colours. Um, but I thought it would be nice after to add a little bit more, you know, see how far you can go really with the blending and adding mix, mixing colors and stuff. Uh, then I thought the pink looked really cool as well, so I added some pink. Um, on that one I'm not actually too happy, but on the others the pink looked, I think it worked out quite well. So, you know, you practice and you see how it goes and um, sometimes it works well, sometimes not as well. But, I mean, it's not, you know, the card is made of a lot of different bits that once it's all complete I think it works well together. Um, I've uh, then coloured uh, the little cups, the coffee, sorry, and then the cup. And I did try to do a slightly lighter green, uh, brown, sorry, for the tea, a darker brown for the coffee. And then I decided to add some colour because I thought, it, I don't know, I wanted something, maybe it was top, but I wanted something colourful. Uh, so I went for a pink cup sleeve and then a yellow one. Um, and then I found my... Um, how is it called, sorry, colorless blender is really, really useful there. Um, it gives you, you know, on the bubbles, you kind of see the stroke. Uh, when on the cups and the coffee and the donuts, I wanted it to be more blended and more, um, let's say, seamless. And the colorless blender is really brilliant for that, so that really helped. Here, I'm not too happy with the donuts. I will go back to it later on. On the cup, I've used the um, gold Prisma color and the silver Prismacolor for the plate on the donuts. I've not used this too very much and I was worried that they might not actually show much and you may not see it on the video but when you see it in real I think the gold is actually pretty gold and it does have a bit of shimmer in it so you know or metal metallicness metallic effect in it so when you look it against the light you can kind of see it. Uh, here I went for a black and white cup which I was not happy with afterwards so I will correct that and you can see that one is blue and you will see how great the Prisma colors are in terms of blending. I don't know if other crayons do that because that's the only set I have. Um, I have a set of watercolor crayons but I'm not, I'm not happy with it so I won't tell you more about that. But um, these crayons are really really good for blending. And when that cup is blue and white now, adding some pink will really change the tone of that cup and it will go a lot better with the rest of the card. So anyway, I keep on coloring and I go on and on and on. Um, I should probably have mentioned, I start with some Memento Tuxedo Black as usual and it's some Bristol, Bristol sorry, um, Tone Grey cardstock and it's really cool. I love the effect of the Prisma color against that cardstock. It really is my favorite. So here you see the blue and I added some red and I try to blend. Oh, it's more of a dark pink, a rich pink, and then I add more and I try to blend again. For some reason on the camera it looks blue, but in real life it's a bit more purple toned. Um, I don't know why I often get that problem, purple turns up blue on my screen for some reason. Um, then the donuts needed a bit more depth, a bit more, you know, it was a bit more 
too flat, too yellow. Um, never ate a yellow donut. <laughs> so yeah, I had a bit of depth to change the color. And yeah, overall, I mean, it's quite straightforward coloring, but I do really like Prismacolor. I think they're really cool. And then I added some shading, and you will see the Prismacolor. It's kind of a shield. I suppose you could probably do a embossed like resist technique almost with a Prismacolor, because if you look at the bubbles, uh, the Copic doesn't really sink in the paper. It kind of sits a little bit on it. It goes for a little bit, but not that much really. If you compare between a bit that has uh, no Prismacolor on it and a bit of cardstock that does, sorry, you will see the difference is quite obvious. So yeah, but it's still I think it looks quite nice. And I really like doing, here I think doing like a quite a dark shading really makes it look like the cup pops off the paper and I think it's quite cool. And then, because I'm tired of trying to make the pigment pen work on the Prismacolor, I went straight for my glaze pen. Um, and it worked really well. Uh, the only downside with a glaze pen is when you look at the cards in a certain orientation, let's say. Uh, the light reflects on the glaze, so you don't necessarily hit black anymore. You see it like reflecting the light. Um, I mean, it is a glaze pen at the end of the day, but in terms of... Fluidity of the ink, the ink comes out really well, uh, it's really easy, you don't have to go over again and again, it's really easy to draw the outline of an image with the glaze pen and that's what I really like. The only thing I should say is that it's quite thick because there's a lot of liquid coming out, so it's not brilliant for thin lines. But here I did want some contrast, I did want my cups to pop against my background so that with the shading behind it, it would look like it's really lifted off the paper. So that's what I was going for. And then I kind of like that adding frame thing around cards, I think he adds a little bit of a little bit of contrast, <laughs> the C word again. So anyway, oh, I've also retraced my um, my grating as well. So I hope you find this card interesting. I'm planning on doing a bit more of that bokeh effect with uh, the Prismacolor in the future. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel, click on the little bell for notification, and please, if you did like it, give it a thumbs up. Thanks again, and have a great day. Bye!